So today we're going on a road trip. We're going back up to Scotland. As a Scotsman, especially not living in Scotland anymore, I can get quite emotional and teary-eyed when I think of the beautiful landscapes. Golden eagles, stags in the mountains, you know, the whole chocolate box memory. But really it is like that. You know, we all joke about it, but really it is a most beautiful landscape. So it was fantastic to get to the west coast of Scotland to interview an artist uh, about his stained glass journey. Uh, I hope you enjoyed today's interview. It's with Alec Galloway, who's an artist who I've admired for many years. So this is incredible. This is your gallery space, and I can see you've got it set up for a class today. Yeah, Derek, this is uh, this is where the classes take place up here. Uh, this is our main gallery space, so we display stained glass, paintings, jewellery, uh, ceramics. We've got a little group of artists that show with us. Um, and this is the kind of main area that sort of the public come into, and we can sit and chat and talk and show them work. It's a nice space, it's very relaxed, very chilled. And you've got so you're set up for how many people here today? We've got eight today, and this is a, these are monthly blocks. So uh, the people come along on a Sunday between 12 o'clock and two, and they're basically learning quite basic techniques. They're learning how to use the glass cutter, uh, the grosing pliers, uh, and understanding a little bit about the glass itself and the different kinds of glass. These are local people, nobody in this group has ever held a glass cutter before uh, before last Sunday because that was the first day. So they come in on the first day uh, really excited and they want to try it out. They're a little bit nervous sometimes and by the end of those first two hours they're cutting and using the grosers and just getting into it and loving the glass. Fantastic. So tell me a little bit about the artwork here because there are a lot of different painters. Do you have guest artists in? We do, yeah. We've got uh, we've got a little team of local artists, uh, painters, photographers, uh, jewelers, all local, and they uh, they've kind of gravitated towards us. We opened the gallery up um, just you know initially with the idea that I would show my work, and then these people started to come in, and we made friends through the classes. So now we've got this little pool of lovely people that come. Uh, and what we do is we give them space in the gallery, they show their work and they sell their work and it's a little collective, so it works really well. These lovely uh, canvases here, this large one here is by an artist called Rosemary Beaton. Yeah. Uh, she's Glasgow School of Art uh, and Rosemary is well known for her really vivid, colourful landscape. So she's, she paints a lot in Scotland, she goes up in the Western Isles she does a lot of, uh, you know, sort of places like Iona, uh, Harris, and the lovely thing is, n no matter where she is, no matter what the weather, uh, and Scottish weather is usually a bit grey, uh, Rosemary sees these colours in, in the landscape. She, she uses vivid blues, pinks, greens, and her work's very distinctive because of that. So is it mostly landscapes and seascapes? I can see a variety of things here, including your, your work up here. Yeah, I've got a few things that are, uh, I, I like collage and I like to mix things up a little bit. So uh, as much as the, the sort of painting side and the drawing is still there, I like to kind of play with materials. I like to include uh, found objects and I, I like the idea of a little bit of DNA from somewhere else. So old bits of newspaper, uh, pictures, um, family things, you know, it's, it's a bit of a mishmash. And I kind of treat that the, the same in my glass. It's, it's a kind of collage style that I usually do as well. I personally love that style. I mean, I, I kind of was turned on to it by Robert Rochenberg. Yeah. His combines. Yeah, yeah. Which is literally, you know, going through the streets of New York or wherever and, and pulling things out of bins and making them into art and old mattresses. And yeah. You know, incredible. So it's very, it's very kind of site specific, isn't it? It says a lot about the history of a place. It does, Derek. And we we recently had some. Uh, we we broke with tradition with the glass classes recently, and we had a, a four month, a four week uh, block of collage. And uh, the people that came along to that hadn't done any collage work before. So we looked at Rauschenberg, we looked at Joseph Cornell, we looked at Peter Blake, and how those artists would take found objects and then reinvent them into their paintings. One of my favorites is Paul Murray. 
uh, his works are here. He he uh, works in the kind of still life style, and uh, we were friends in school uh, when we were you know growing up. Inverclyde does have a real range of artists. You know, there's a lot of people, uh, you know, sort of that, that study at Glasgow School of Art, which is just up the road, and um, you know the, the local college as well. So there is a really nice creative community here. Um, and what we wanted to do with the, the gallery was to kind of try and create a space where people could come and enjoy work and show work and just, uh, it's, it, there, there hasn't really been a gallery space in Inverclyde before, so uh, we feel as if we're, we're kind of, you know, showcasing other people's work, uh, which they really uh, appreciate and it, it lets us also interact and enjoy other people's work as well. Uh, I, I like the idea of challenging the kind of notion that stained glass has to exist as a window uh, and that was quite an early sort of development in my stained glass work where I wanted to kind of take it away from the, the rectangle or the square and I developed these pieces that were kind of hanging uh, pieces. These are, these are called harps and uh, you know I construct the wood and it means that they're, they're, they're kind of portable, they can hang in a window space, but they're also sculptural at the same time. Very new and interesting. Does that work outside as well as inside? Yeah, yeah, I do. I do pieces that are freestanding. So uh, I call those um, totems. So they're, they're kind of take influence from Native American uh, structures and, you know, sort of uh, South Pacific, you know, the kind of freestanding pieces of work. Uh, again, it was a it was a kind of a notion to to release stained glass from the the, the kind of straitjacket that sometimes it, it has as a as a piece of work in architecture, and I like the idea of moving it around in the landscape. So some of the totems that I've done over the years have been, uh, for example, tidal. So they've been in tidal areas where the tide comes in and the kind of totem disappears, and then the tide goes back out and these structures emerge out of the water. Uh, so yeah, I like that idea of trying to you know invent new ways of showing glass. One of the things that, I, that galleries sometimes have struggled with is how to display glass. So if they haven't got a window space, uh, which you know a lot of galleries uh, don't have a lot of window space, then it's difficult to show glass in natural light. So I developed these light boxes as a way to showcase my work, and uh, these are very popular now and. They also uh, kind of tick the box for people who want to commission a piece of glass and have it in their home. Over the years, uh, I've used different ways, uh, experimented, but the, the, the LED lights just now that you can buy are really, uh, you know, they're really efficient. There's no heat, uh, so they're really uh, they're good because they don't generate any, any heat behind the glass. Uh, and they now come with little dimmer switches as well, so you can adjust the level of the light, which is great. I think new technology has really, like LED panels, has freed glass to be used much more in gallery environments, which is an, is an opportunity that glass artists really haven't used. We've been bound to buildings for so long, haven't we? That's right, yeah. This is right up my street. I love this kind of work. I really do. I love these all these kind of borrowed images brought together to make create something new. And you've got quite a lot of screen printing plus hand hand painting and etching. There's a lot of techniques at play here, yeah? Yeah, yeah. The, the, the screen printing, um, that's something that I initially developed at Edinburgh College of Art as part of my sort of um, uh, tutoring. Uh, some of the students wanted to try screen printing, so we experimented with it. And it took a wee while to get it, you know, to get it to the, the sort of... Um, the right sort of consistency, because we're obviously mixing traditional glass paint, uh, which isn't printing uh, ink. So we had to experiment. It took a wee while. What and medium do you use then? What's your mixing medium? Uh, the, the students would experiment with lots of different oils to get the consistency, uh, which was was really interesting because there was lots of different results. But the the, the real stabilizer for the glass paint was um, pine oils, uh, and it, but then you can't overpaint over screen printed pieces, can't you? Once they're fired, you can then add layers, and you can double plate, and you can you can really kind of use the the screen printed image as a foundation to to build on. That's right, yeah, and and quite often I'll do that. I'll I'll put layers of two or three layers of glass printed glass together. Maybe some layers with uh, silver stain on, and then some with the, just the, the, the painted surface. So it's really it's really rich, and it, it, it allows 
uh, for a lot of use of imagery, uh, which I, I enjoy. And I like mixing it also with some, you know, older fragments because as part of the, the kind of restoration work, we, we find ourselves with lots of little fragments of older glass. And you've got this lovely kind of like medieval, um, you know, repair lead lines coming into play here as well, which I love, that kind of mosaic quality. Yeah. Repair pieces, it really works well, doesn't it? When you've got these fra fragments that slightly reflect the light in a different way and... That's right, yeah, and and the lead is 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 as important as the glass work. You know, yeah. the graphic quality of the lines and the thickness of the leads. You know, thin and thick leads together. I really enjoy that kind of graphic quality, uh, which in medieval pieces we see all the time. You know, it goes back to the collage idea. I think the collaging different techniques as well as imagery is something that I've always enjoyed doing, and especially the outdoor work. You know, because I, I would quite often photograph totems in different light conditions and in different geographical spaces, and the effects were just completely different. So that's always been, that's that's been a kind of driving force in my work over the years, is, is that kind of like sort of portability of it. So this is the workshop, uh, main workshop where I I do the, the sort of, uh, the kind of painting, the, some of the, the heavier equipments here, the kiln and sandblasting and those kind of things. Uh, so it's, my goodness, this is hidden away. It's a bit of a working space oh my uh, with the, uh, you know, lots of stuff. I like recognise these. So these, this is your kiln and sandblaster, yeah. This is the kiln and sandblaster, and the the kiln. There's a great story with the kiln because I used to have a two meter by one meter kiln, the the big large flatbed kiln, and when I got this space, uh, we couldn't get it in because the, the the door wasn't big enough. Oh my lord. So I was able to sell that and buy a smaller kiln and um, with a lot of pushing and shoving and taking it apart we managed to get it in this space and then sort of put it all back together again. There's more we can go through to the actual working area which is through here. Uh, so this is the space where I do most of the work. The benches are here and the light boxes, etc. Oh wow. Um, wow, wow. This is great. So this is my... This is my bench, which is was the bench that belonged to the guy who taught me stained glass, Douglas Hogg, who you oh, know very well. Douglas, I know Douglas. Yeah, yeah, he was an absolute like legend for me. He was my tutor at art school, and uh, we're still in contact. And he was a major influence on all, everything that I think about with glass. Yeah, Douglas is weaved into that. So this was his workbench. This is his workbench, Derek. This was uh, when Douglas was downsizing. He got in touch and uh, he said that this lovely bench that he built uh, for for you know his uh, early part of his career, and he couldn't bear to break it up and throw it away. So I managed to obtain it and. Um, there's quite a lot of real estate here. That, 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 how did you get this downstairs? Well, this again, uh, similar to the kiln, this had to be dismantled completely and numbered, uh, you know, with lots of little marks. So you can see down here, there's a sort of little, you know, sort of three. Oh yeah, uh, those are three. So we, we managed to dismantle it. And uh, I, I do have to compliment Douglas because it, it wasn't easy to dismantle it. It was a real task to get it apart. Uh, but yeah, it's been custom made for stained glass, this this massive heavy top, uh, there's space inside for the boxes of lead, uh, there's a kind of flip lid here so that the bench can be extended if there's a larger piece needed. So it's, it's, it's perfect, it's absolutely perfect. So... This workbench, you've got a you've got a drawing table there, you said this is where you make, this is where you make and cement and you paint here, yes, this is your light table? This is my light table yeah. here, Derek, yes. So the painting takes place here uh, on the light box. Um, I've also just been given permission to uh, create a window in this wall here. Okay. So I will have some natural light coming in as well. Uh, but at the minute, it's just on the light box. Yeah. And then onto the bench. This is where all the, the glazing happens uh, and, you know, all, all the, the kind of the, the mechanical work of putting the panels together, basically. Now, do, you, do you kind of just draw uh, regularly on your own as well, outside of commissioned work? I tend to work on the sketchbooks and then play with ideas there and then sort of translate those into glass. Can we have a look at some of your sketchbooks? You can, yes. Uh, these were done uh, in St. Ives. So these are little sketches of... Uh, the kind of 
front, the beachfront areas, uh, uh, just um, sitting down looking on Portmere Beach, you know, these kind of things. Uh, some of the, the, the wildlife from that area. Beautiful, beautiful. You know, little little thumbnail sketches, you know, just little things. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The little turnstones or the little birds that you see on the quayside, they're very, very friendly uh, and they kind of, they kind of run under your feet almost. Yeah. Um, and what I'll do sometimes is just walk with the sketchbook in my hand. So uh, these kind of little shapes here are, are the kind of like walking motions, if you like, of walking around the harbour uh, mm. and kind of sketching almost without looking at the page. Yes. Um, that idea. And then, you know, cliff top walks. Uh, this was a little walk. The, the nice thing, uh, the, what I love about the sketches is, is that they just take me back to that space. And this was a, a cliff top walk to Lenant, which is, uh, Lenant, sorry, uh, and uh, just kind of north of St. Ives. And it's where one of my heroes uh, is buried, uh, Peter Lanyon, who was a great Cornish painter and part of the St. Ives school. So I did this walk as a kind of, you know, pilgrimage um, to, to Lanyon. Uh, really? and, and went to the little churchyard where he's buried there. You know, many artists have been drawn to those kind of locations, you know, those kind of like sort of, uh, you know, to, to be by the water and in those kind of coastal spaces. And I've always loved that. And I think there is a kinship with the St. Ives artist. When I look at that work, I recognise, you know, my own geography and my own space where I come from in the west of Scotland. You know, I, I recognise that the work is to do with light, it's to do with um, space. Uh, those kind of things so that there's there's definitely a, a, you know there's definitely a kind of parallel um, between uh, the artists that do those kind of like seascapes and those kind of things uh, there is also a connection uh, from locally there was a a wonderful poet called W.S. Graham who came from Greenock he was born in Greenock and he eventually uh, made his way to St Ives and became part of the St Ives community uh, and was very influential on a lot of artists like Barbara Hepworth and Ben Nicholson, Peter Lanyon, etc. And he was from, he was a local uh, man from, from this area. So I love to, when I'm talking to artists, I love to ask about perhaps three of their favourite projects, you know, or significant projects. Do you want to highlight maybe two or three projects that really for you were, were kind of like milestones or something that you feel, um, you know, is particularly uh, pleasing? When I when I left art school, I I, I was actually I found myself uh, in a stained glass job in the Middle East in Dubai. I was given a job uh, with a, a glass company the same year that I sort of graduated. So it was very early days. They were just really beginning to build the large buildings there. And one of the one of the large projects was the Burj Al Arab building, um, which uh, had a lot of glass in it. So I think from the perspective of um, you know learning about how to work alongside architects and consultants and work to timetables and those kind of things. That was a real uh, learning curve for me. And the scale of the work was was enormous. You know, it was, it was there, there was hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of square meters of glass within the building. And that all had to be created and timetabled uh, to fit. Other ones closer to home, uh, a few years back, I did a, a collaborative project with Rosemary Beaton, the paint, painter that I'd spoken about earlier. Uh, and Rosemary's uh, paintings are very vibrant, very colourful, uh, and we were given a commission for a building in Glasgow, in the west end of Glasgow, in Ashton Lane. So there's this lovely tall uh, window that's sort of over about five storeys of the side of the building, and it's a kind of narrative that goes from the top of the window and tells a story of the kind of River Kelvin flowing through the, east, the, 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 the sort of Glasgow's west end. Uh, and it's very vibrant, very colourful, and that was a lovely project because I hadn't really collaborated with another artist before, so we, we learned a lot from each other, uh, and the results are there because it, it looks as much my window as Rosemary's uh, window as well. So your, the crow motif features a lot in your work. Why so? Why, why the crow? Yeah, I think uh, it goes back to to childhood, I think, um, when I first started drawing as a, a wee boy, uh, it was birds that, that, that kind of fascinated me. I lived in a space uh, close to the, the kind of quayside of Inverclyde and, uh, you know, down at the Custom House Quay. So 
I was seeing seagulls and pigeons and those kind of things. Uh, and through that exploration, the crow really was the one that started to, to dominate. Um, I suppose because of the the, 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 the the image of the crow, you know, I feel is kind of, you know, it's misrepresented because they're incredibly intelligent creatures. You know, they really, uh, they're, they're sort of, you know, really wise um, animals. This is Louise Wiley, my partner, and we uh, together um, set up Crow Cottage Arts, which is where we're sitting just now. And uh, we've been open just almost two years now. So we've done this by kind of combining both of our, our strengths and experience. Um, uh, when I was a, when I learned to do stained glass, there was a fantastic support. Edinburgh College of Art had uh, degree level, master's level courses, uh, and students would, from all over the world would come and study. And that doesn't exist anymore. So we are at a position now where, it, in terms of the education side of it, there's there's nothing. So a young person wanting to study stained glass would have to leave Scotland and, and go outside. And from a Scottish perspective, that's incredibly worrying. It's really sad. We've got this rich heritage of stained glass and history in Scotland. Uh, and I think it's important that we have to look at this in some way, try and, and, and redress it. I feel like we've got a responsibility to challenge those above us on that uh, politically but also to support people who want to do it. Part of our life here in Inverclyde is that because Inverclyde wouldn't be thought of as somewhere where you yeah, had a thrive and creative community. And I think the fact that we are happy and thriving and have never for a second given up, I think that is, that's as credible as anything else we do, I think. Just the fact that you can do it. Because if you don't see that, how do you know that you could do it? You know, you don't, you've got no one to look to, to do it. And um, no, I think that's really a big part of what we're trying to do. Well, I think it's testament to the fact that you have this wonderful artist studio, uh, gallery, teaching facility. You're showing, I mean, you're not just telling, but you're showing people how it's done. You're creating a beautiful environment. You've got a fantastic community of people together. It's been really wonderful to visit your studio gallery and uh, meet you both in person. Uh, we have spoken on social media together, but there is no substitute really for coming up here and meeting in person and seeing the work up close. So uh, thank you so You're much welcome. for thank spending you. time with me today.